Hello, y'all. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to another fabulous episode of Real Women, Real Talk. Mm -hmm. I, as you already know, because you've been listening, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to assume that you have been watching and listening to us. So I'm going to mm -hmm. stop saying if you're new, because you're not new, we're family now. We're mm -hmm. sisters. So you've been here and brothers because we have some men watching. We're sisters and brothers now. And so I am the Siobhan Carter. You know who I am, the facilitator for Real Women. And I am joined by my sister. Hey, y'all, sisters and brothers. I'm Trinace Richardson. I'm the founder of Real Women. Yes, 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 yes. And we will tell you more about who Real Women is later in the show. But I just want to jump on into this conversation today, sister. So first of all, Real Talk, how are you doing today? I am doing amazing. So at the time of this taping, I am purging. Um, it's a favorite thing of mine, spring cleaning, if you will. But I've done my closet and it's amazing. And I'm doing books now. And I have organized a community yard sale. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Flyers and uh, advertisements and stuff. So encouraging everybody in my community to purge on whatever level they're comfortable. And it's yeah. really setting me up for... Um, things that I have planned financially and um, and personally. So I'm doing really good. I'm feeling energized by this, the turn of the weather. Uh, the yeah. sun shines on me. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. yeah. It was such a beautiful day today. Like I went for a walk uh, during lunch to go grab lunch uh, instead of driving like I usually do. I was like, you know what? I'm going to walk today. Mm -hmm. And it was just so... Beautiful. I was hot, you know, sweating by the time I got back, but I just loved being out in the sun today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How are you? So this might be a little deep real talk okay. uh, because I am in a reflective space today mm -hmm. um, or in this moment. I just recently had a conversation with anxiety. Mm. So I just started my uh, practicum yesterday. At the time of this taping, it would would have been yesterday, and it was my first, you know, uh, site visit and just meeting everybody. And I absolutely love, love, love this counseling center. It's going to be amazing. The women are amazing. My site supervisor is amazing. The environment. When you walk in, you you feel the calm, you hear the calm. They have the water and the the sounds and the smells. It smells so good in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's decorated so nicely. And so the experience in and of itself and the people is going to be really great. I already mm -hmm. know it. And um, mm -hmm. I found myself after yesterday's experience, just kind of learning the lay of the land, talking to my site supervisor, thinking about what my requirements are going to be for class, because I have a class that uh, accompanies this uh, field experience. So just thinking about all of that, when I came home, I found myself just really starting to worry and get anxious about everything. Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to get this all done? These are the requirements. These are the due dates. How, 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 what, what, what? So I was sitting here today just like, OK, writing out how I feel, what what's going on within me, because I just felt all the angst uh, building up and the worry. So I just decided to write. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, I want to have a conversation with my anxiety. Like what is, what's going on? How, yeah. how what is this? What's underneath it? Mm -hmm. And and this may be for you who are watching as well. When you think about those times when you're feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. My anxiety was connected to fear mm -hmm. of not uh, uh, achieving the outcome that I have set for myself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. fear of this is the time frame for practicum. If I don't meet this, then that's going to delay things. It's going to prolong things. I'm not going to be able to graduate when I want to. So all the things that I desire to do. Yeah. Um, and so when I got present to that, I was like, oh, girl, OK, so you are really attached to an outcome instead of just journeying, you know, and being present in the moment and in the experience. So yeah. 
Yeah. So that's that's how I'm doing. Long story short, that's how I'm doing. I am being with my anxiety today. Yeah. Yeah. That is um, beautiful and relatable. And I guess I'm wondering where where did you all has the conversation concluded or is it still ongoing? Yeah. Yeah. It's still ongoing. So it was up until we started today. Um, But I do feel more calm when I allowed the anxious thoughts to just tell me how it felt, you know, instead of just like be anxious for nothing. Cause I thought of that scripture and it's just like, okay, we're going to get there. But right now, what, what are you feeling though? You know? Um, So I think just giving myself space to feel uh, is helping me in this moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a a little deep question. We mix in deep yeah. dives and real talk a little bit, yeah, but yeah. um, but I'm curious because you are the you relationship coach. Yeah. And you help yeah. others, and you've done study on it for yourself to mm-hmm. really be a student of you. Yeah. Um, and one of your um, mechanisms of doing that is really exploring the pieces of you, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Your in- internal family systems. Please go back to previous episodes if you want to mm-hmm. know more. But I'm wondering with that backdrop, is this anxiety that you're speaking to, is this a piece of you or is this just an emotion that you're feeling? Does yeah, this you. is yeah, this is definitely a piece of me. This is D. D is okay. the cautious one. She's like, girl, now what have mm-hmm. we gotten ourselves into? Yeah. And, and so all the things, all the thoughts, all the fears. Um, so this is definitely a piece of me. And so now it's just like utilizing all of my tools to say, okay, let's bring in another piece of me to help calm us down. You know, the mediator, the counselor, the coach inside of me is just like, okay, just relax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now tell me what you're it's almost like I'm the client that's coming in to see me that has anxiety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it feels like. So I'm counseling myself right now in this moment. Yeah. So yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Y'all all sitting at the table and you like tell me all about <laughs> exactly. We're having a family meeting right now. And so uh yeah. So I, I'm it- gonna have to reconvene after this uh live. Yeah. So and I wanted to give a little context for that because um, if you haven't watched the previous episode, please go back um, yeah. to to where we talk about the pieces of ourselves. Mm-hmm. But you are exampling how you manage emotions. You know, yeah. when, when there's not necessarily a counselor present. Or yeah. when there's not a friend to, you know, to lean on or listen to when you are, when it's just you, yourself and you, um, yeah. How, yeah. how do you do that? And so to really recognize that it's only a part of me, it's only a piece of me that's having these emotions, but a part of me is confident and a part of me is, you know, is sure that we're going to make this. So let's just talk. Let, yeah. let me talk to me. Um, yeah. and, and I don't, you know, it's not schizophrenic at all. It is, mm-hmm. it is literally no. um, learning how to better self-manage um, yes. ourselves and our emotions. So thank you yeah. for examining that. That's beautiful. Absolutely. And I'll just say this one last thing before we move on. This for me is the key to my inner peace. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of times we walk around with conflict within ourselves and we don't know how to manage that inner conflict. And so When I take the time to be still, to journal, that's my way of communicating with myself. Um, And I take that time to journal and just be and allow the different thoughts to just come out on paper. I'll say it like that in a more plain way. Allow all of my thoughts to come out on paper. And then I get to see what it is that I'm thinking and feeling. Um, And so that brings me peace. So, yeah. So if, if you're having inner conflict, not sure how to resolve that within yourself, Instead of projecting outward, um, mm-hmm. this is a, a tool for you to pro- to go inward just to identify what's happening within you. So and good. if you're in Maryland and you're looking for uh, someone to help you with that, I am a counselor in training and I am accepting clients. So yeah, I must say that I am not a licensed therapist, but I am a counselor in training, which means that I can see, see clients under, I- under a, a licensed supervisor. Yeah. I am speaking it to be so because I believe it to be so. Your clients are coming by the droves. Yes. 
And you're going to have some decisions to make in the near future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So reach out to me if, if you're looking for uh, someone to help you walk through uh, your inner inner peace process. A, 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 amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, sister, for allowing me to have that moment to share what is really going on with me mm, today. Real talk. Real talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question, though, uh, in this segment that I wanted to ask. Uh, I know last time we were talking and we were like, oh, this this uh, this is heavy. Like this episode is heavy. We need some levity, some some light. <laughs> Uh, uh, we've been we've been deep lately, we've girl. Deep lately, Lord <laughs> Jesus, let's come up with some air. So <sighs> I wanted to talk about happiness today uh, in the real talk segment. Like, what's something that makes your heart smile? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just smiling right now. <laughs> I'm smiling so big. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, in this season of my life family and very good friends bring me so much joy. Yeah. Uh, with, without sharing too much, I just had the opportunity to spend time with some good girlfriends. <laughs> and we had a time, we had a time, we had a time. And it, it, cons <laughs> it consisted of dancing and laughing and talking and eating and and sharing and helping each other um, and being silly and being mm -hmm. ratchet. Like it was just a whole bunch of stuff rolled mm -hmm. up into one evening. And that brought me so much joy. Yeah. Um, so connection with people that I really connect with bring me joy, brings me joy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the second part is I'll go right back to it. Being mm -hmm. out in the warm weather, the sun makes me smile. Um, yeah. and everything connected to it. I have been able to ride most days the last few weeks, uh, the last few days. Most of those days have been spent with my top down when I'm outside mm -hmm. riding. Yeah. Um, music blasting. And that that is for nobody but me. I am yeah. not showing off for nobody. I am getting my personal groove on yeah. uh, with the music and the sun shining on me. So um, so those simple pleasures really outside in nature brings me a lot of joy. And it mm -hmm. makes me, I use the, the word in this sense, joy synonymous with happy because it makes me smile from yeah. the inside out, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. So one thing that brings me joy and makes my heart smile is doing what I love to do. So mm -hmm. going to that counseling center yesterday is just like opened me up. And I was like, oh, this is where I need to be, honey, all the days. So <laughs> that definitely made my heart smile. And some good ratchet music and dancing with my friends will do it for me. You hear me? Like us just cutting up and just being in a safe space to just mm -hmm. be with each other. No judgment. We laugh and we eat in. I love that. Just mm -hmm. a good, a good time. Mm -hmm. And what makes my heart smile is when I see people or when I hear people say after we've had an encounter or something like, I really needed that. Like, oh, that just does my heart good because it's like, yes, let's get more of what we really need, you know? Yes. So, yeah, stuff like so that. Just makes me so happy. And food. You, yes, I and food. food. Yes, oh, you agree. God. Yes, food. <laughs> Let me just add one more, one more. This, okay. this, this conversation makes me happy because we want to know about y'all's too. But yeah. um, so, music in particular. Mm -hmm. Music specifically brings me so much joy. Yeah. Um, and, and I know we've talked about it in previous episodes that music has the power to make you feel, you know, it can it can take you down a deeper, darker road if you choose yeah. to go that way and listen to that. Um, yeah. Or it can just lift your spirits. And so mm -hmm. creativity, um, music, good lyrics, feel good beats, all of that just brings me a whole lot of joy and happiness. Yeah. Oh, a good beat. Yes, indeed. <laughs> a good beat just make you wanna, uh, both of us did the same thing. 
Because <laughs> that's what it make you want to do, even if you ain't got no rhythm. It's just, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I was trying to get one of my girlfriends to teach me to percolate. Come on. I know. I know. He was like, oh, no. <laughs> Too funny. So, y'all, mm -hmm. look, we want to hear from you. We want to know what makes you happy. And share it with us. Uh, visit us at speakpipe.com forward slash real women, real talk and share with us. Or, honey, we've been getting emails. So, if you just want to email us, send it to info at real women rock. Dot org and we appreciate those who have sent emails and we are going to start incorporating those into the show so we love it and mm -hmm. if you want us to uh, read your story or scenario uh, feel free to reach out to us through speakpipe or via email we would love to hear from you absolutely all right sister let us transition into the deep dive segment where we expound on a nugget uh, that we have been stewing on in our lives since our last uh, meeting together, or mm -hmm. that comes from a real women's circle as well. So since we are talking about happiness, I wanted us to talk about in the deep dive segment, are you doing what makes you happy? Mm. Is the question. Mm. So... I'll set it up for you and then I want to uh, hear from you. So mm -hmm. in December of 2020, I facilitated a real women's sister circle and it was titled entitled, but are you happy? Mm -hmm. And um, during that session, I asked the ladies to think about something that they've been desiring to do, but they hadn't done yet. So that was like our icebreaker that we did. And um, I asked them after they thought about something that they desired to do, I posed the question, what if you got the news that the opportunity to do that thing was tomorrow? Mm. How would you feel? So before I go any further, uh, sister, I want to pose that question to you. What is it that you have been de desiring to do that you haven't yet? And what if you got the opportunity to do it tomorrow? <laughs> or start on it or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, golly. <laughs> so what is something that makes me happy? And what if I got to do it tomorrow? Yeah, or something something that you've been desiring to do that you haven't done that, that makes you happy. And what if you got to do it tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just need it. Okay. I act like I haven't seen these questions before. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So, no, it's fine. <laughs> so I desire to be on acres of land. Okay. Mm. growing my own food um, and living a self-sustained life. Mm -hmm. yep. So to the degree that, you know, I just go to the store because I want to, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I order online because I want to, but, but my basic food needs and, um, livelihood needs are met on the land in which I own. Mm -hmm. Business pursuits, entrepreneurial pursuits, everything is there. And I am manifesting this. Absolutely. I am talking about this um, and it is coming um, mm -hmm. in this physical realm in the very yeah. near future. Um, but if it happened tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, and, yes and amen. Yes and yes. amen. I just... Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I have only been delaying it because I need to get certain things in order to make it happen. Um, yeah. But if if it were possible to happen sooner as in tomorrow, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is not something there are other things I could talk about and maybe I will as we move forward. But mm -hmm. there are other things that maybe fear or anxiety would keep me from saying it as quickly. But that yeah. is not. That is not one of them. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You said yes mm -hmm. and amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Yep. Okay. So being at the counseling center yesterday reminded me of 
my heart's desires. Mm. So when I uh, let facilitated this sister circle back in 2020, I went back uh, recently just to look at what I what I said, you know, because mm-hmm. I answered the question for myself as well. And so I said my heart's desires was to do work that I am passionate about full time, Mm -hmm. which was talk about relationships for a living, help people get to the root of who they are and explore why they do what they do, (laughs) help people share their powerful stories so that their voices can be heard and share my opinions and perspectives on self-love and relationships in different forums across the country. So those things, that's my heart's desire. And I am on my way to doing those things. Yes. Like, for real. <laughs> it is happening. Yesterday was tomorrow. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yesterday was the start of my tomorrow. So mm-hmm. um, I'm so excited. Um, and so what was interesting about it was as like I said, this was December 2020. And I re-enrolled in the master's program at my current college for the counseling degree in uh, 2021. So it was a few months later that I was I felt the nudge and just really got uh, going with pursuing what it is that I truly desire. And so I truly believe, like I said, that I'm well on my way. And um, just being in that environment just made me feel so good. It felt so right. Mm-hmm. And I, it ignited the passion in me to continue doing um, what I truly desire to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I just I just wanted to share that because that's where this is coming from. Um, and I want to pause here and say, if there is anyone that's watching this, I really want you to start thinking about what your heart's desires are. And mm-hmm. if you are uh, pursuing that desire, if tomorrow mm-hmm. were to come, for whatever it is that you desire to do, how would you feel? And where are you on that, on the path to really realizing that dream for yourself? So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I want to, I want to share this story um, that a woman shared with me recently, um, just to kind of uh, reiterate this point as well. And just to show how people are really out there pursuing their dreams. So mm-hmm. Uh, she, w- I was talking with a woman recently and she said that she was working a good government job. And if you are in the Washington DC area or anywhere where there are federal government, uh, jobs, you, you probably hear people say, I just, I'm not going to mess up my good, good government job. <laughs> <laughs> right. They, they pay you well. And you know, it's, it, it offers a sense of security, you know, and stability. And so, um, she was working her good government job in her field. But it felt like she was dying on the inside because it wasn't what she really wanted to do. Mm. And so one day she was approached by a good friend of hers who invited her to join her in a business. Her friend had been talking about this for probably like 14 years. Mm -hmm. And her friend just approached her and was like, look, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I am on my way to doing. And this was in 2020. When this when this uh, friend approached her and she said, I want to start a business to help black women and um, I want you to join forces with me to help me do that. Mm -hmm. And so she started working with her part time, you know, and just kind of getting her feet wet. But the more she worked with her part time, the more she realized this is exactly where I want to be and need to be. Wow. And so at some point she took the leap of faith and uh, quit her good, good government job and started working full time with her friend who is now her business partner. And they have been in business together for almost five years, helping change people's lives. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And And so she she said that she took a pay cut um, because she was making good money on her good government job. But she took a pay cut. and. Now, five years later, uh, she is making more money than she was on her job and she has uh, health benefits because she was concerned about that, making that transition. But all things have been restored to her. And so um, she was just just really being an encouragement like, hey, do what your heart desires, basically. And so that that may look different for uh, other people, but it really just resonated with me. Um, especially when she was talking about dying inside 
Uh, and so I know how that feels, you know, mm-hmm. to just be doing something and you just really don't feel like you're alive within yourself. And yeah. so, yeah. So yeah. what are your thoughts about that, sister? So, so many things just ran through my head. Um, I, I want to start with um, an examination of our decades. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. no matter what age you are listening or watching, we are all living in a decade, right? Mm-hmm. So um, for me, and and it may be different for everyone, and I think we've referenced this in previous episodes, but for mm-hmm. me, um, my 20s was more exploration, figuring out who I am, that kind of thing. Um, my 30s was really trying to solidify myself professionally. I mm-hmm. spent a lot of my 30s finishing school because I went straight mm-hmm. through to get my doctorate. Mm-hmm. And so I spent a lot of my 30s in school and working at the same time. So professional focus was my 30s for the most part. Um, I, I ended up having my son at 35 So um, and had already been married in my 30s for at least five to 10 years, depending upon how old I was. And so uh, my 40s, which I am just now exiting, Um, My 40s have been really honing inward on how I want to spend the rest of my life. (laughs) Really like just some serious introspection because it really is true that the longer you live, you know, the, 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 the time just goes by. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so with without with uh, knowing that I don't have a day or a week or a month to waste um, and, and that every day that I um, fully, that I'm fully present and all of me is a day well lived. Mm -hmm. I am so intentional about that. And so that's what came to mind as a backdrop while you were talking about the woman that Mm -hmm. you talked to and just this topic of doing what you desire, because the truth of the matter is your scenario is really a reality for all of us. It isn't, Mm -hmm. you know, necessarily 24 hours in tomorrow as far Mm -hmm. as, you know, you desire to do it. And what if it happened tomorrow? But yeah. we can live today like it's tomorrow, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So, so if I am not doing something today, mm-hmm. yes. whether it's mindset preparation or um, actually taking a step closer toward it, um, I think we start, what's so exciting about your um, revelation in that you are, yet as of yesterday, walked into your purpose um, Uh being fulfilled is that we even started these podcast episodes with your journey just kind of being I'm in school and I'm about Uh to start this journey and I'm a little afraid about it and I haven't even called the spaces yet and so Uh every step that you took every week of every month got you to the place yesterday where your yesterday represents your tomorrow. And so, so much of that um, just was flooding my my mind and my heart while you were talking, because um, at at the same time that our desire is not to waste time, the truth of the matter is, is nothing is wasted. Nothing Mm, is wasted. mm. Yes. Every every moment that we have spent ruminating and maybe desiring or being resentful of or, or mourning the loss of or mm-hmm. all of those feelings can be fuel to move us closer toward whatever it is that we truly desire. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it I love that this is ignite reigniting um, a flame that's already lit for me. Because mm-hmm. it just says, you know, we are all moving closer to what it. We, and if you ever feel like there's a failure happening, consider it, 
consider it falling forward. Like I'm just, yeah. I'm stumbling forward, not backward. I'm just like, oh, okay. So that was a little, that was a little jarring, but it lets me know not to do that again. Or it lets yeah. me know that, that that relationship is not the right one or that mm -hmm. business opportunity was not the right one, but I can move forward being informed by that decision and that, mm -hmm. you know, that incident. So that that's just a little of what started when you were talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. I can feel the fire and the passion in this moment, which which I love. And we always feel that when we are uh, communicating uh, with each other, we always take each other there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what, sister, what just came to mind is if there is someone watching or listening to this who is thinking, you know what, that sounds so good and I'm so happy for y'all. But you know what, honestly, I don't know what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Uh, so I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. What would you say to her? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So quiet time is something that is hard to come by mm -hmm. in the world that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe that things external, noise, podcasts, this podcast, um, people we admire, churches, pastors, teachers, mentors, all of those things can inform and affirm mm -hmm. what we are, what we already have inside of us. But nothing takes the place of us digging and excavating internally to ask ourselves questions and get answers from ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So to say, to, to, to just example, to say, I don't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. that, that may be true in theory in this moment. Mm -hmm. But to ask yourself questions, I bet you have an answer for you. What, what mm -hmm. do I like? What do I, what, what do I like? What feels easy to me when I do it? Or when I think about it, what makes me smile? What do I see somebody else doing? And when I see them doing it, I feel like this is, that's something I could do. Or my heart is drawn toward that. What, what feels like, um, a, a burden in the best way for me. Like when I see children, I really want to reach out and help them. Or when I see senior citizens, I really want to reach out to help them. When I hear poetry read, I feel like there's a poem in me that hasn't been written yet. Like asking myself questions. And then I can say to myself, no, that's not it. Mm, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let me explore that for a moment. If I were to go down that road, what would it look like for me? That's alone time. Mm -hmm. and, and again, these kinds of conversations can help spark some of that conversation. But at the end of the day, if you listen to us every single episode, every single week and never slow down to actually interact with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It just it doesn't happen without that slowing down and getting quiet and, and tapping in. Um, and, you know, we create spaces. We said we mm -hmm. talk about real women. Um, we create spaces in real women that help allow that to happen, um, whether you are in a sister circle with us or whether you are at our intensives that happen once a year. If you connect with us, give us your email at realwomenrock.org. You can um, go to our events page. You can find out more about us on our pages so that you can connect with us virtually or in person so that we can help usher you into that exercise if you haven't done it before. But that was a long way of answering your question. I would say it, it really is time to get quiet and ask yourself some questions that maybe you haven't had the time or the space to ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. I echo everything that you've said. Uh, and the only thing that I would add is for those who don't even know how to go inside of yourself to ask those questions, yeah. you can have that model for you as well. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, with a counselor. Um, you can take these uh, thoughts and in, in, uh, with a counselor, with a coach, with a mentor, like Trinace is a mentor mm -hmm. uh, for leaders. Mm -hmm. So there are avenues that you can go to to get the support that you need to help model the process to teach you how to go inward and find those answers for yourself. Because the answer is still within you. Even if you go to those other people, they're going to be asking you questions to help you uh, go inward. So there are so many tools. So I just ask that you would um, be present with yourself enough the same way that many of uh, people want to be in a relationship and you would want that person that you are desiring to be in a relationship to want to get to know you and want to ask you questions. It's the same process. It's just with yourself. So mm -hmm. uh, the best relationship, the most, the lifelong relationship that you're going to have is with yourself, the longest relationship. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. and can, so I, important. can I add one more thing, mm -hmm. sister? So um, we do this like we do this because we have to. We study for our jobs like we yeah. get to know our jobs. We 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 get the position description, we interview for it and we we study for the interview and then we get on the job and we take the trainings mm -hmm. and we you know, we do all the things so that we can become better at our jobs. And that's somebody else's dream. That's somebody yes. else's goal, set of goals. Yes. We are we are literally helping someone else execute their dream. Mm -hmm. And so all you don't have to be an we don't have to be entrepreneurs to to self-manage our dreams, to, mm -hmm. to execute our goals and our desires, whatever. If it's a relationship that takes work, if it's, mm -hmm. you know, um, a professional pursuit that takes work, if it's inner peace, it that takes work, like whatever it is we are looking for, there's some effort that has to be put forth for it. Mm -hmm. And I'll just add this sister, because we are always very sensitive to where the stages and phases of people's lives. Mm -hmm. If you are in a place where your life is so chaotic mm -hmm. that um, that it doesn't feel like there is space and room yeah. for quiet or self study or um, or money for a counselor, all of those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. I would I would first say real women is free. <laughs> That's yeah. what I would start with yeah. first. Yeah. Um, so we have a community that helps you with that free of charge. But I would say. Um, and some people don't like this word, but I like it because it's it's for me the 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 most extreme uh, word for cleansing that I can think of is there might be um, a season of purging in our lives that needs mm -hmm. to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love the word purge because it is very, very hard to get to the point that that not only do we know we need to let some people and some things go, but that we actually do it mm -hmm. um, because nothing can get in this hand until I open it up <laughs> and, yeah. and yeah. let it go and let make room for something greater. Um, yeah. And so there, you know, if there's a whole lot of chaos, what can you take off of your plate to make more space and room and capacity? Mm -hmm. That's what I would ask. Yeah. Because you matter, you're worth it. You mm -hmm. you are worth the investment. You are worth the purging. You are worth the focus uh, mm -hmm. because you will find so much gold there. There are so many jewels inside of you that you haven't uh, tapped into. Uh, I'm I, I'm pretty sure you haven't because there's a lot of things I haven't even tapped into mm -hmm. within myself, even with doing this work for a long time. And as you were talking about, you know, the work and how we put our energy into learning how to do the job and when we go to school. And it just made me think about enroll in the school of you. Mm -hmm. Like in, enroll in this school. It's a whole university right here mm -hmm. that you can learn so many things. If you just enroll, get in there, mm -hmm. sit down and, and get your notebook and just write down, you know. The things that you hear and see and observe about yourself. So, yeah. Ooh, this is so good. You know, I can talk about this stuff all day. So good. So good. <laughs> I, really hope, I really hope that has encouraged someone um, mm -hmm. that it continues 
to ignite their fire or that there is a spark that is generated from this conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, yes, be encouraged and do what makes your heart smile. Mm-hmm. All right. So I want to go into our next segment, segment put myself in her shoes, because mm-hmm. uh, this is a special one. Uh, we had a Real Women Real Talk listener <laughs> that wrote to us. Yes, they're coming out the yes. woodwork now. <laughs> they are coming out the woodwork. So thank you, Real Women Real Talk sister, for uh, sharing this uh, scenario with us. It's, it's really funny. And it stems from our episode, The Size Matter. And we knew that was going to generate some conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We knew it was. We knew it was going to happen, and so we are grateful for this. And so I want to read this scenario that she shared with us and uh, get your take on it, sister. Putting yourself in her shoes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this uh, listener wrote to us about receiving an unsolicited penis picture. <laughs> From a guy that she worked with. (laughs) Okay, slow down. Just hold on. Let's breathe. Uh huh. Because the first part of that episode, it was we we went there. Motion of the ocean. Yeah. Or the size Uh of the boat. And then we went on to other things. But I love that she said, (laughs) "What I want to send (laughs) y'all is this the first part." Yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. And so she said that this uh, guy, uh, who was also her coworker, uh, he used to brag about having a huge 10-inch package. Mm-hmm. And he always talked about how big it was and that so many women wanted him because of it. So mm-hmm. one day, he just randomly, out the blue, sent her a close-up of his package with a ruler next to it so she could see how long it was when it stood at attention. My, my. First yeah. of all, first of all, second of all, because I already did a first of all, I work in HR and this is somebody she works with. So there are so many issues right now. <laughs> so much, my first thought when I was reading this was, where do they work? Where, where is this office? You said it was an office. <laughs> There's just so many things going happening with this. So okay, go ahead. <laughs> she said it wasn't anything to the, the package wasn't anything to boast about, mm-hmm. and that it was only five and a half inches long, and not the ten inches that he said uh, he was bragging about. Mm-hmm. So about fifteen minutes later, after he sent her the package pic- picture, he sent her a message apologizing and begging her not to show it to anyone else. Mm-hmm. But honey, she said it was too late because she had sent it to all of her co-workers and her friends. <laughs> she oh. also found out that he had sent the picture to other co-workers. And 15 minutes later, he sent the same apology to them as well. What is happening? I don't know. He is just sending packages through the mail. Okay. okay. <laughs> Text message. <laughs> I don't know. And so they just all laughed about it. And Mm -hmm. from then on, the women at work kept making jokes by measuring various items in the office with the ruler saying things like, dang, that thing is smaller than I expected. It doesn't even measure six inches. (laughs) Hilarious. Not pulling out the stapler. And And you know, they pulled out all the things measuring. and, And I guess who knew what they were talking about. So she said it was funny watching him turn red as he listened to them joke and laugh. And uh, about two weeks later, the guy ended up leaving the job probably because of embarrassment, because it didn't go how he thought it was going to go with all these packages being sent. So she posed the question, do guys expect women to react to their unsolicited pics with comments like, ooh, that's such a nice penis. Is that all for me? (laughs) Oh, wow. I feel so lucky now. It's so big and such a turn on. (laughs) <laughs> what are you guys looking for you know so my question to you sister <laughs> mm-hmm. okay how would you feel how would you have responded if you would have received a package picture back in the day mm-hmm. um and would you have showed it to your girlfriends like what would you have done in that situation um so <laughs> first of all um 
It's a lot happening. It's a lot happening. I still have to process that. Okay. He ended up having to leave a job because he of was. a decision he made. He made yeah. the he decision was. to send the pick. Bless his heart. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so if I were sent a pick, I'm speaking for me, and I think I'm speaking for some of my sisters. First of mm -hmm. all, um, a penis has utility, it has use, but there is nothing beautiful about mm -hmm. a penis. There is nothing attractive about a penis itself. And so um, <laughs> so I would not be impressed. Back in the day, I would not be impressed at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would have immediately deleted it. I would not have reported him because this was a job situation. Right. I would not have reported him. And I would... I probably would have told my closest girlfriends. Hopefully my closest girlfriends were not at my work friends. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> that uh cuz right now I don't work with my closest girlfriends. So right. uh -huh. So my closest girlfriends would get all of this tea. Um guess what <laughs> happened was um but I would hope to contain it at my job especially with the hat that I have on putting myself mm -hmm. in this yeah. woman's shoes. I work in HR. So, yes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm thinking of all the things that are wrong. That's wrong with this. And I would have tried to coach him. Um, you know, I, evidently I wouldn't have caught him before he sent it to somebody else. So I wouldn't have been able to control all of the things, but just really tried to coach him on it. But it is not. It is not attractive. It is not a turn on. I mean, maybe a nice built body, maybe um, yeah. overall. Like if you if you show a whole pic, maybe. But just uh -huh. that, no, sir, no, no, not me. <laughs> Especially because if you go back to this episode, you know my thing was motion of the ocean anyway. So, uh, -uh. no, I'm not attractive yeah. at all. What about uh -huh. you? Sister? <laughs> So I, I don't I don't recall ever receiving an unsolicited picture, mm -hmm. uh, but I just don't like unsolicited pictures, period. Like I've had men send me pictures of themselves in different outfits, like mm -hmm. after we we met. And I'm like, what? I didn't ask for this. So what? Mm -hmm. why are you sending this to me? And so I putting myself in her shoes, if it was a work situation, being that I'm a leader at work, I definitely wouldn't share it with my coworkers except for the co-workers that are my close friends, because mm -hmm. I do have some of those mm -hmm. who are in my close inner circle that I just happen to work with. And so they, I would probably let them know, but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't send it to them. I would just go to their office and be like, girl, look, 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 look what happened. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but I, I wouldn't just be sending it to everybody. Um, and uh, I would delete it because it wouldn't turn me on at all. Like, I don't think that's cute. The only pics I would want is from the person that I am dating. Yeah. And, and that's the only one that I would enjoy. But other than that, just sending it randomly, because at this point, you're a creep, like you're a creeper. And so this is what you do. And you nasty. I don't want it. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. So that be it, it feels yeah. like there's something compulsive about it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was sent to me and other people. Right, and, right. Um, that's, you know, something about that doesn't feel healthy. And, it doesn't at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's yeah. some issues there. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So it's like, why did you feel the need? What were you looking for? Look at my counselor. Like, what are you looking for? Are you looking to be validated? Why is that the only way that you feel like it needs to be validated? So all of that would have come up for me. And yeah. Yeah. That was, mm -hmm. I mean, thank you, Real Women, Real Talk listener. That yes. was <laughs> hilariously weird and wild. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So, you know, let us know what you would do in this situation. So uh, reach out to us at speakpipe.com forward slash Real Women, Real Talk and let us know how you would handle an unsolicited package picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see right here are a trip. Funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get them. Right. We, we can't we don't know what we're gonna get when we I get them. No, we have get no idea. <laughs> you know, our inbox is open. So yeah. just share what you what you want to share and we'll tastefully mm -hmm. uh share it. <laughs> if it if it fits what, what we do. Figure so. out a way to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So let us transition into the spiritual nugget seg segment where we talk about uh, things that may inspire, encourage, or uplift people as they uh, in this podcast listening today. So sister, what comes up for you as a result of this episode or just in your heart? Ooh, um, the words, um, the word joy comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I want to say joy is our birthright. Mm, okay. Because many of us are living less than joyful lives. Mm -hmm. And we think in the moment that either there's no way to change it or that this is what we're supposed to experience, mm -hmm. um, hardship, struggle, um, inner conflict, lack of peace, fear, anxiety, worry. Mm -hmm. um, all of that feels like the opposite of joy. Mm -hmm. It's not that we can, can't have moments that we process our real legitimate feelings. And we won't always feel happy or be on the mountaintop or at the top of the roller coaster. There mm -hmm. will always be valleys. But in the midst of that, my joy comes from my inside out because I am clear that I matter. Yeah. That I'm valuable. And when we come to that revelation, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. our journeys just seem to lighten up so much mm -hmm. because we are now in a space that we know I deserve joy. I, mm -hmm. I, it is my birthright to feel good inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and if, um, thank, thank God for the sisters and, and mentor women in our lives, um, Reverend Dr. Anika Wilson Brown did a, um, a meditation this morning where a devotion this morning, and she talked about the tables are turning. Mm. And so, I share those two thoughts with you that joy is your birthright. Mm -hmm. And if in this moment you don't feel all of the joy and the goodness that comes from valuing you from the inside out, mm -hmm. stand on the hope that the tables are turning for you mm -hmm. and then take the steps to walk in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. I ain't adding nothing else to that full plate, honey. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. No, just take my napkin and just do that because that was good. <laughs> Feast on that good word. Yes. So good. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So we are real women, real walk, real. We are real women rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's who we are. And so we want you to learn more about us. If this episode has made you want to know about us since we're talking about Real Women Sister Circles and the events that we have being an avenue that you can use that's free of charge for the sister circles, uh, that you can come and just learn more of yourself to help you to explore more of yourself. Visit us at realwomenrock.org for more information. We have virtual session, uh, sister circles as well as in-person circles that you can attend uh, to just be and just to uh, connect with other women, like-minded women in a, a safe space, a non-judgmental space uh, that so that you can learn about you and connect with other other people. So we would love to hear from you, realwomenrock.org. And yeah, 
So this has been another amazing episode of Real Women Talk. Real women, real talk, honey. I'm going to get all these words out. It's real, it's real, it's real. <laughs> yep, it is. We live recording. We are live. <laughs> yes, we are. I ain't cutting nothing out. So, yes, you know who we are. You know what we do. So, yes, until next time. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. <laughs>